The Atlas project is a project funded by NASA to try to find killer asteroids. Asteroids are leftover rocks and chunks of ice from the early solar system. There's ones that are way out, way beyond the orbit of Pluto that are icy. There's an asteroid belt that lies between Mars and Jupiter. A lot of asteroids orbiting there, a lot of rocks. And then there's other ones distributed around. The ones that we care about are what are called near-Earth asteroids, and these are ones that are in orbits that uh, come near the Earth at some point or other and in principle could hit us. The idea is that if you have something that's going to hit us, it'll eventually get very bright and we'll see it. So the brightness of something or other depends on, first of all, how big it is, and also it depends on how far away it is. A rock of a given size will be fainter and fainter and fainter if it's farther and farther away. Conversely, a rock of a given size that's coming at us will get brighter and brighter and brighter. So the real trick is to come up with a sensitive enough system that it provides you with enough warning time that uh, you can do something about it. And so a little rock the size of a pea, I don't care about it. It's going to burn up in the atmosphere. But a rock that's coming in that's maybe, I don't know, you know, 100 meters big or something like that, that's a terrible multi-megaton explosion, I'd like to know about that way ahead of time so that I can say, hey, watch out, people, move out of the way. Even if we can't deflect it, at least knowing where and when it's going to hit is, is the goal of the Atlas project. 100 megatons, we're going to get you This telescope is 20 centimeters in diameter. The actual telescope will be 50 centimeters in diameter. This guy's this long, the actual telescope is this long. So the thing that, that was actually the genesis of the whole Atlas project was the realization that it's a modest size that's required to give you modest warning. So it turns out that if you want a couple days warning or for a one megaton explosion, you want a week's warning or something like that, it requires a telescope that's about a half meter in aperture. That big, that big, 500 pounds. It's, you know, a mighty big telescope by amateur standards, mighty big compared to a 35 millimeter camera and expensive, but very modest by, by uh, you know, professional standards and, and rather modest in terms of what it costs. Line the telescope. Yes. Make sure we know how to do that, and then once it's aligned, we can point to where the sky's clear mm -hmm. and go shooting for asteroids. We're working to build Atlas in kind of a staged spiral sort of a way. Um, right now we're trying to put a Pathfinder telescope, it's a little 18 centimeter telescope and it's way less sensitive than the big telescopes, but it will allow us to start developing our software. Okay, okay good, tighten up. Probably close. Over the course of the next year, 2014, we will be upgrading the detector in that telescope and uh, eventually at the end of next year, end of 2014, we'll be putting in the big telescopes that are just now being fabricated. We plan for 2015 to be basically shakedown and we'll be working on the software hard. We will be making the things really work well, work robotically and so forth. And so uh, then by 2016, 17, we should be in steady operations. What we'd like to do is to be able to provide 24-7 coverage of the night sky. And so obviously during a certain portion of the day, the Hawaiian island chain is underneath the sun, it's daytime. What we'd like to be able to do is put more units around the planet here and here so that as the planet orbits, when it's daytime in Hawaii, maybe it's nighttime on mainland US or nighttime in Greece or the Canary Islands or nighttime in India. And of course that gives us a view of the northern sky. We'd like to do the same thing in the southern sky. And so what we'd like to do is put a telescope down here in Australia or New Zealand, one over here in Chile, and one over here in South Africa, let's say. And then with six units, let's say, in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, we would pretty much have continuous coverage of the night sky.